state state of roads. Some inhabitants worry that the mayor has neglected the roads rehabilitation project of Loom in his developmental projects as he has rather centered on putting pathways in areas that needed less according to them. Potholes, poor drainage and dust are the major characteristics of roads in Loom, notably at Kalfu Tombel, a situation that has persisted for many years causing pain and sufferings to the population. We move on on to this newscast in the far north region of Cameroon as you heard on the headline that 260 households in Petuare, that is a locality in the town of Marua, would soon benefit from potable water in this area following a project that is underway. This project has been extended and it is under the watchful eyes of the Sedo Day project which of course represents the Cameroon run Frank's bilateral relations. Mange Venasus brings us details of this story. It was with these gestures from local administrators of the town of Marwa in the far north region of Cameroon that the project to extend portable water to 260 households in Pituare neighborhood was launched. A project expected to be completed in three months, covering a distance of three kilometers, falls within the framework of the C2D urban program project. Launched by the Mara city mayor, Dr. Sali Babane, the project that cost more than 100 million francs CFA will come in to improve the living standards and health of one of these major neighborhoods in the city of Marwa. Inhabitants of Pituari, like other quarters, have been going through untold suffering in search of portable water. With this gesture from the head of state, the population through the city mayor did not hide their feelings. I would like to say thank you. Thank you to the head of state who gave us the opportunity to, to build this uh, water network uh, in, in Pituari quarter of Pituare in Marwa. So, it concerning 2,060 families were concerned about, uh, concerned about this project. And till now, Pituare is, uh, will be out of the zone which there are no water. Dr. Sally recalled that the neighborhood had equally benefited from other developmental projects that makes life conducive for the population. This project come before the electricity project, public electricity in the quarter. So and now Pituare is uh, in the top level in the city of Marwa because they have electricity and water. All these are thanks to bilateral relations between Cameroon and France. The city mayor called on the population to jealously preserve the project for their own good. Human bones trafficking persists as a major societal and legal ill in the noon division of the west region of Cameroon. Five men were recently arrested by forces of law and order in this locality while they carried out the crimes and they have been brought before the law to answer for their crimes. We get in the following report that their arrest is a result of fruitful collaborations with the local population. Mange Venasus has the story. The issue of trafficking in human bones in the non-division of the West region has refused to cease. This time, it was the case with five men between the ages of 20 to 57 from Mantum neighborhood. With information from the village head, the gendarmerie element in Malantuen were informed that two tombs have been profaned in a family cemetery in a quarter called Malam as the Fumban Interim Company Commander George Lo Yai explains. Rapid actions are taken and with the help of the population, the gang was arrested. A recurrent phenomenon that is more or less becoming a new normal in this locality. This gendarmerie official thinks that it does not tie with the history of these people. He called on the young people to abandon the 
quest for quick riches and have themselves employed on something honorable. At the same time, parents should assume their responsibility of bringing up their children. At the time Muslim community is going through the holy month of Ramadan, these five men, Muslims by faith, would be a sharp contrast to the practice followers of Muhammad are called upon to adopt. They have been brought forward to answer before competent judiciary authorities for this act. In the following report, we look at how the scarcity of coins in Cameroon's economy is causing a major problem in the mobile money sector for all mobile money transactions or communications networks in Cameroon. This problem is faced not only by subscribers or customers, but equally for the business operators. Arte Bonaventure takes a look at that. The scarcity of change for some time now has been a veritable point of discord between subscribers of electronic money services and those operating the business. A customer receives 10,000 CFA francs and comes for withdrawal. The operator asks him or her to pay the transaction fee of 150 francs from his or her pocket so as to ease cash disbursement. He gets angry and goes to the next shop and he is told the same story. I make sure that everyone coming here has his transaction fee because we regularly lack coins or change. When a customer does not have his transaction fee, I ask him to go and look for change. Economic principles stipulate that the customer should be treated as a king and to this subscriber, it is the place of the operator to provide change. Before coming to work, they have to look for change that will facilitate their work in order not to annoy their customers. The e-bankers say even though they understand the plight of their subscribers, they are usually helpless because it is not easy to be receiving customers and at the same time looking for change, especially given that it is easy for them to be buggled while they are out of seat. La fille qui est en service, la personne en service, ne peut pas aussi laisser la gestion d'argent qu'il a pour aller faire la monnaie à l'extérieur. The service girl cannot just abandon her service just to go and look for small cash from outside to pay the subscriber. But here we are coping. To salvage the situation, many have seen the need for mutual understanding between the operators and the subscribers. On to this sad story, it has been confirmed. Cameroon's former Prime Minister Simon Achidi Achu is no more. He passed away on Tuesday, May 4, 2021. He lost his battle to a long-term illness at the age of 87 in a hospital in the United States of America, according to close sources. Simon Achidi Achu was the first Anglophone Cameroonian Prime Minister appointed following a parliamentary vote on April 9, 1992. He held the position of Prime Minister until September 19, 1996 and was replaced by Peter Mafani Musonge. The, following, the full, fallen politician equally held several positions in Cameroon's government. He was previously Minister of Justice from 1972 to 1975 under the first President Amadou Ahijo's rule and until his death he was a leading member of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement CPDM. Simon Achidi Achu was also chairman of the National Investment Corporation and an elected member into the Senate in 2013. That is a great loss for Cameroon indeed and it brings us to the first part of this news which is news within Cameroon and now we take you to news out of the local borders as the Prime Minister of Tanzania or rather President of Tanzania Samia Suluhu Hassan is in Kenya for a trip to negotiate with the neighboring country over crisis that the neighbors have been experiencing in the past years. Also, Eritrea's president, Asayas Afeki, is in Khartoum for talks with the country that is Sudan's officials over a border dispute that both nations have also been experiencing recently. Rogeatu Buba completes those stories. 
Tanzania's President Samia Sulu Hassan is in Kenya for a two-day trip aimed at strengthening ties between the two East African neighbors after years of dispute. Hassan who became her country's first female president in early April after Magufuli's death was received by two ministers on her arrival in Nairobi before heading to the presidency. The Kenyan president Uhuru Kenyatta and Suhulu announced the signing of an agreement to transport liquefied petroleum gas from the Kenyan port of Mombasa to the Tanzanian economic capital. Of the six nations that make up the East African community, Kenya is the largest investor in Tanzania and the fifth largest on the continent. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided further fuel for this animosity with disagreements over border closures. The Tanzanian president on Monday announced new measures to control the spread of COVID-19, while late president John Magufuli had consistently downplayed the virus and claimed that his country had been freed from it through prayers. The Eritrean president, Isaias Afwerki, is in Khartoum for talks with Sudanese officials amidst tensions over a long-time border dispute between Sudan and Ethiopia. According to a statement from the Sudanese Sovereign Council, the two leaders began closed-door talks on cooperation and ways to develop ties between the two countries. The two-day visit comes after Sudan, in February, accused a third party of siding with Ethiopia in its border dispute with Sudan. Following Sudan's accusation, Eritrea dispatched its foreign minister to Sudan, who assured Khartoum that Eritrea was not part of the dispute between Sudan and Ethiopia. Sudan and Ethiopia have since held rounds of talks to try and settle the dispute most recently in December, but have not made progress. The visit came as the Eritrean president faces growing pressure from the international community, including the United States. That brings us to tonight's edition of the news on DBS television with me, Cynthia Nguemo. Thanks for being with us. We shall be back tomorrow, same time, still on DBS for another edition. Until then, good night.